Another wrestler will miss this Sunday's Forbidden Door event after being hit with the injury bug, therefore being removed from a scheduled match this coming Sunday. Plus, we have an update when it comes to the ratings for this week's episode of AEW Dynamite on TBS. All this and more in today's AEW News. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of All Elite Wrestling, especially with Forbidden Door coming up this Sunday. And one person that isn't going to be competing at Forbidden Door on Sunday in Chicago at the United Center is Tomohiro Ishii because he's the latest person to be struck down with this... Injuries come in waves in professional wrestling. I've, I've experienced as a fan... Several instances of companies, whether it's WWE, WCW, Impact Wrestling, whoever, when they've had just everyone just starts to get injured. And WWE and AEW, they've had major injuries this year. New Japan Pro Wrestling, I've had it actually for like the last year or so, 18 months or so. They got hit with the injury bug really, really bad as well. And this this event, Forbidden Door, this cross-promoted pay-per-view this Sunday from the United Center in Chicago just kind of feels cursed at this point, doesn't it? Because another star will be missing Sunday's AEW New Japan Forbidden Door event. New Japan announced yesterday that New Japan Pro Wrestling star Tomohiro Ishii has sustained a left knee injury and he is not medically cleared to compete at Forbidden Door on Sunday. Now, his replacement will be none other than Clark Connors. He will be uh, taking Ishii's place in the AEW All-Atlantic Championship four-way match at Forbidden Door. The, the uh, match now reads as Connors versus Pac versus Malachi Black versus Miro to crown the first ever All-Atlantic Champion. This is a statement released by New Japan Pro Wrestling. Quote, thank you for supporting New Japan Pro Wrestling. Tomohiro Ishii, who was scheduled to compete on June 26 at uh, AEW New Japan Pro Wrestling for, Presents Forbidden Door, has sustained a left knee injury and is not medically cleared to compete. We apologize to fans who are looking forward to seeing Ishii wrestle and appreciate your understanding. After a hard-fought qualifying match in Kurakan Hall on June 21, Clark Connors will take Ishii's place in the All-Atlantic Championship four-way at Forbidden Door. The card change is as follows. AEW All-Atlantic Championship four-way, Pack versus Miro versus Malachi Black versus Clark Connors. Now, as previously noted, and we spoke about it here on the channel, but it's just <laughs> general news at this point, AEW has also been dealing with a slew of injuries before the Forbidden Door pay-per-view. Of course, big names such as Brian Danielson and CM Punk are just two AEW wrestlers who are currently injured and will be missing the event on Sunday. Of course, no Kenny Omega as well. He's on the shelf. We don't know the status of MJF. It's not an injury, but certainly big names that are missing. And it goes the same with uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling as well, with the likes of Ibushi, with all that stuff that's going on as well, and Dato. There is just, there is, there are, like I said, this event does feel somewhat cursed, and this injury bug that New Japan had has kind of found its way over to AEW as well. And I said on a couple of occasions over the course of the last few days that I do hope this becomes an annual thing. I do hope this becomes a regular thing. One, because there's just so many matches. Even if you had the healthiest of both rosters, there are still other potential matchups that you want to see. You can't do all of that in just one event. So my hope would be that it would become a regular thing. But now I really, really, really do hope it becomes a regular thing because, I mean, let's face it, there, there are just so many people missing. I want to see a cross-promoted AEW New Japan show that features CM Punk, that features Brian Danielson, that features Kenny Omega, that features, you know, I said... Um, Kota Ibushi, that features uh, Naito. Like, there, there's, there's just so many. There's so many people missing that show on Sunday. And it's not to say it's going to be a bad show, but certainly having all of those people that are missing on it makes it a better show. You can't argue that it doesn't. Like, it, the show will suffer because of that. Now, the match is still going to be great. You know, Moxley versus Tanahashi is still going to be great. The IWGP World Heavyweight Championship four-way, Jay White, Hangman Page, Adam Cole, Okada, uh, Kazuchika Okada is going to be great anyway. But... There are just there are there are other matches there that potentially could have happened that aren't going to happen. So my hope is that we do eventually get another event. Whether again, whether this becomes a regular thing, whether it becomes uh, you know uh, um, twice a year, maybe it could become twice a year where you have one event in in the United States, in this case Chicago in the United Center, and you have another event that's in in Japan at um, you know the 
Tokyo, the, 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 the Tokyo Dome or something like that. Maybe that happens. Or maybe it becomes every other year it's in the United States and every other year it's in Japan or something of that nature. I hope so, because as I mentioned before, First of all, the aesthetic's completely different, which I think would be interesting, you know, if it was, if it was, say CM Punk was going to face Tanahashi and he wasn't injured right now, CM Punk versus Tanahashi in the United Center in Chicago is completely different to CM Punk facing Tanahashi in the Tokyo Dome. Like, there are just different domains, different aesthetics, different crowds, different reactions, and a different match, most importantly, different presentation. So I think that would be a really exciting thing to do anyway. So my hope is that, as I mentioned, at the very least, we see next year, the event, once again, Forbidden Door, but this time it's in Japan, or we see it every six months. I think the six-month thing could be interesting, actually. I think that would be really interesting to see. We don't ultimately know the full extent of this working relationship between AEW and New Japan. If we see it twice a year in different locations across the world, that means that their, their working relationship is very, very strong. But ultimately, we don't know that at the moment, so we'll have to wait and see. But Yet another change to a, an event, as I mentioned before, I think I said this yesterday, the card we are seeing on Sunday is just, you, you, you just know, it's drastically different to the card that was originally imagined by Tony Khan and the powers that be in New Japan. It just, it clearly is. So hopefully in the future, we do get to see what that original card would have actually looked like. Now, Obviously, Dynamite on Wednesday was the go-home show to Forbidden Door this coming Sunday. And a lot of people had their eyes on the ratings and the viewership numbers because, of course, last week it was not good whatsoever. Now, viewers were cold on Dynamite last week, seeing its lowest average in viewership in the key demographic since April of 2021. Uh, now, this week, executives at AEW and Warner Bros. Discovery can breathe a bit easier as Dynamite viewership was up from last week's. WrestleNomics is reporting that this week's edition of Dynamite caught the eye of 878 average uh, thousand viewers uh, overall, which is up 15% from last week's episode, with an 11% rise in the 18-49 to 49 demographic. The show was essentially tied for first in cable uh, originals on Wednesday night ratings against the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills if that's your thing. Uh, of course, this week's edition had a lot of heavy lifting to do with the announcement of four matches for Forbidden Door. We saw the likes of uh, several New Japan appearances of Tanahashi, of course, Kazuchika Okada making his AEW debut as well. A strong main event. Um, but the leading program on Wednesday was Game 4 of the NHL Stanley Cup Finals, which saw the Colorado Avalanche defeat the Tampa Bay Lightning to extend their series lead to 3-1. and one. Uh, The game was viewed by 1.31 million viewers on average, um, while the key demographic and overall viewership was up for the pre-forbidden door show, the male 12 to 34 demographic dropped 24%. Uh, people 18 to 49 was down 10%, and people 35 to 49 was down 12%. The female 12 to 34 demographic was up 29%, the biggest percentage jump of any of the average uh, viewership demographics. Now, again, it's just it's interesting because, as I mentioned before, it's up from last week. They'll be happy with that because last week's number was not good. Uh, but I remember around this time last year, certainly as we were heading back, we were just getting back to being back on the road at this point last year. I remember that the, the ratings were really strong for Dynamite. You know, they were getting to the point where they were going to be doing over a million viewers every single week. That was the average. That was the norm. So we've still seen this drop off of 200,000 ish viewers. Where have they gone? You could argue that they've gone because of the injuries. You could argue that they've gone because the product isn't as hot. You could argue that that is the modern day casual fan. I, I've spoken about this before. I, in my opinion, the casual fan has changed. People will talk about the casual fan. I think you either like pro wrestling or you don't. I think if you like pro wrestling, you know mostly the inner workings or you know some of the backstage gossip. I think most fans are, shall we say, hardcore-ish fans. Everyone knows the game. Everyone knows it's a work and everyone knows to a certain extent some things that are happening. So I think the whole the casual fan thing that just flips on um, any program, I think that's I think that's really changed because the selection's so high of competition that's out there for anything when you watch television. So if you watch anything, it's very rarely myself. I think about this. I don't even watch a lot of TV nowadays. I'm watching football and I'm watching wrestling, and that's my choice. Like I have to actively make that choice. The days of just surfing the television or you know flipping through channels, I think, is over. It's very defined. So if you're a fan of something, you watch it. That's really it. I think that the idea of the casual fan is actually quite small. So in my opinion, I think the the reason why the ratings and the viewership are down year on year, you could argue it's because that's just television in general. But in my opinion, the real reason why the the ratings are down and the viewership's down is just because they. AEW's just a bit colder. 
it doesn't feel as much see as it was last year. There was so much intrigue and so much hype. People coming into AEW around this time last year or beginning of the hype of it. I don't know if the CM Punk story had broken. I know that, of course, Punk came in in, in August. It was early August, wasn't it? The United Center and, and the, the, the story of him returning or coming to AEW was a few weeks prior to that. So it was maybe July around that period of time. We might have been, I don't know if we'd heard it at this point, but there certainly was a lot of buzz to AEW um, around the summertime last year. As I mentioned, CM Punk, Brian Danielson, being back on the road, the roster they had, um, there was a lot going on and there really was a lot of excitement. And um, is there as much excitement this time, you know, th this year? I would say no. I say it is a little bit colder and they do have a lot of people missing which doesn't help it as well, as I mentioned, you know, CM Punk, Brian Danielson, Kenny Omega's a big loss, the MJF thing stirred people up, but ultimately he's off television, we'll see how that one plays out, myself, I think at this point it definitely is a work, and I think they're playing the long game, but it is somewhat colder, absolutely it's somewhat colder this uh, this time, this year, as opposed to what it was last year, and I think that does reflect in the ratings, honestly, people can say about Okada's uh, debut, should it have been promoted, possibly, Possibly, especially with the ratings how they are at the moment, it would have been a good thing. Uh, I think they were looking for that moment. Um, would it have made a massive difference? I don't know, because again, people know who Okada is. I'm not going to be one of those people that say, no one knows who uh, Kazuchika Okada is. People know who he is. Listen to the reaction. Would it have driven a massive bump in the ratings if he was advertised ahead of time? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that one, honestly. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I don't know the answer to that one. But hopefully, I think from AEW's perspective, they will hope that something big will happen at Forbidden Door this coming Sunday. I think they'll hope that uh, with stars hopefully returning quickly, like Danielson, like Punk, we, uh, we don't really know the status of Omega. I mean, it could be towards the end of the year, frankly, um, that he comes back. Maybe that will push things and maybe... Once MGF does eventually return, that will really ramp things up and get people talking because it did get people talking. Maybe that will translate also to uh, to viewers as well. That will maybe be their hope. But we'll have to wait and see when it comes to that one. But it will certainly be interesting uh, nevertheless. Uh, but let me know your thoughts, guys, in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe to Russ News 365. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.